In this recording, I'm going to use some data from previous physics labs to look at significant figures, units, errors, and those are qualitative and random versus systematic errors. Also, quantitative, that is, computational errors. Furthermore, outliers, and then I'm also going to look at average and standard deviation and how to compute them. Okay, let's start out with these data and two things are happening here. Look at how many significant figures there are. There are six significant figures all the way through and also that all of these results are systematically larger than what the acceleration due to gravity should be, which is 982 in Alaska or 980 in the continental US. I left out most of these data taken by the students to mostly focus on these here, on, on the results, what students had calculated. This is what they measured. Measured time for significant figures. They divided by 20 because they had 20 swings. Stays with four significant figures because that's how accurate they measured and they measured the pendulum length to three significant figures and because of this one here the result has to be three significant figures so this one here should be 1010 and then it goes on here three significant figures is the lowest so this one here should be 1070 and so on I'm going to fix this here for a moment, just stop my recording. Okay, so I fix these here, three significant figures, because this one here is worth three significant figures. The other thing to point out here is that these are systematically too large, so the students must have done something wrong. I'm assuming that they measured maybe one too many swings or one too few swings and therefore calculated the wrong number few other things to point out, or at least one other thing to point out, is the units. Students don't have to attach seconds here and seconds here and centimeters here because those are already listed on top of the table. So if there are listed on top of the table, don't attach them again, but it's clear that all of this here is in centimeters. All right, let's move on to the next data set. So what these students did, I'm going to move this just a little bit higher still, there we go, is they measured the time to four significant figures divided by 20 swings, they measured the pendulum length to three significant figures, and therefore the result has to come out to three significant figures, and as you can see they did that correct here, I guess it gave one too many, so 1040. This one here is also the outlier. If you look at all these data, then you can see that 979, 86, 79, 87, 75, kind of around pretty close to each other, and this one here is significantly off, and therefore it should be taken out and considered an outlier. And it's totally appropriate to cross it out and disregard it. Something must have gone wrong here and therefore take it all out because all the other results show that they are really close to each other and the students must have done something or everything correct. And of course there is a certain measurement error here that gives this slight random spread. Definitely not a systematic error but some random error which can be attributed to that you can only measure the pendulum length to the closest millimeter or tenth of a centimeter and the stopwatch gives the time to the closest one hundredth of a second and of course there and there's also the reaction time of about 0.2 seconds in there which obscures a little bit the decimals here on the time all right Let's look at computing the average and that should be relatively 
simple, just add these results. There are two, four, six, ten valid results. Add them all, divide by ten, you come up with the average. But I also want to determine what the standard deviation is, which then would become the error. So I have to do it a little more fancy. On a graphing calculator, open one of these squiggly parentheses and then type in the data. Of course, that obviously takes a while. I'm going to pause here for a moment and put these in while I'm pausing. And the last data point, close these squiggly parentheses and store the data in list L1. When I hit enter, it's just going to give me those data again. And I'm going to go to stats, calculate one variable statistics. I only have one variable here. And I'm going to hit enter and I need to tell it use list L1 that I just stored it in. And here are the results. The average is around at 983 centimeters per second squared and the standard deviation is 4. So I'm gonna enter these here. 982, I'm sorry, 983 I just read off, plus minus 4 centimeters per second squared. Here I need to truncate this here to 4 because I'm adding all these data and as I'm adding these here the rule for significant figures is that I have to truncate after the last accurate digit and that would be the one spec here so after the three which means the standard deviation also has to be truncated here there will be no decimals after that so 983 plus minus four and of course when you look at this here by obeying the rules for significant figures this also looks kind of nice that you can look at it directly and say 983 is just a little bit higher in Alaska than, than what should be in Alaska and then plus minus 4 there is no addition or subtraction of decimals, superfluous de decimals that shouldn't be there and as I said it really looks kind of nice the way it's written this way. What if you don't have a graphing calculator? So I googled online scientific calculator and you can see I clicked on a quite a few here. Turns out they, as they look kind of like a scientific calculator may look like, but it seems like none of them seems to have statistics functions. So instead I googled online statistics calculators and this one here works. I clicked on this one here, I guess because it gave me a bigger editor screen. And I don't need any of this, but this is what I need. Mean, not mean deviation, standard deviation, and actually the mean. And let's see, I have to find the data there. And let's see if I'm able to squeeze it all on one screen here. Yeah, maybe so. So I'm going to type in 979, 986, and so on, all separated by a comma. But notice I can do a shortcut. I can just type in 79, 86, 79. Why am I allowed to do that? Well, because all my numbers start with 900. So I can just say at the end, okay, I'm going to come up with an average here between these numbers and then just add the 900. It's going to be quicker to enter and also less error prone as I put these data in. So that's kind of an alternative to um, putting always that 900 there. Okay, do I have all of them for a 10? Okay, then I'm going to hit compute. Just a little bit off the screen, there it is. And there is that same mean or average 82.5 rounded to 83, so 900 83 plus minus 4. So same result as with the graphing calculator. Okay, let's look at some more data. 
So what I got on for these here, these students have more of a spread in their data and we can already see that this is probably an outlier and probably here's another outlier and these here look pretty good and then we'll see what we come up for this one I took one of the student data out and I put my own in that comes from my video where I measured 53.8 seconds and the period is 2.69 seconds so this divided by 20 and the length is 198 centimeters and then I calculate and I'm going to come up with 4 pi squared divide by 2.69 squared times 198 and I come up with 1080 and that is quite a large outlier and I went back to my video and noticed that indeed I had not put in I had not counted 20 swings but instead I had counted 19 swings so I made a mistake right there and that is fortunately easy to fix so it's gonna be 53.8 divided by 19 instead of 20 so it's 2.83 right here I don't have to retake that measurement as long as I can figure out that that all my is that that's what all my mistake was if I know that I have really timed it for 19 swings rather than 20 then I can fix that and it's not gonna upset my results as long as I'm able to fix it so 2.3 squared here and it comes out to a much nicer 976 all of a sudden I don't have an outlier anymore so I'm thinking that perhaps this is what happened here on some of these results maybe they measured half a swing to few so 19 and a half swings and here maybe they measured like 20 and a half swings notice that oh here I plotted these data and we can kind of see here here's kind of like nice data here some kind of spread in here but not too bad but here is definitely an outlier and here are three outliers so the data are still useful but I have to kick out a few of them and consider these to be outliers and then do the same calculation for the average and the standard deviation as I did before so again let me put, put these on the outside here and here we go and again I have all numbers in the 900s so I can just do the same thing as before 79 84 79 and I'm going to double check my data yep they yep looks like I entered them correctly I'm going to hit the compute button and there is my average so it's going to be 981 plus minus 5 so the data that did survive after kicking out the outliers yield 900 what was it again 981 yeah plus minus 5 standard deviations just slightly larger than what the other students had in the conclusion this is what I'm writing. I guess I didn't have 984, I had 983 yeah, earlier, 983 or 982, depending on which data set I'm using. It's really close to the accepted value of 
982 for Alaska within point actually it's point one percent really close and then what I should write in here is avoid systematic error measuring the pendulum length by putting measuring tape end to end making a mark bottom or top of the pendulum weight so you have to measure to the middle of the pendulum tape me middle of the pendulum weight to the suspension point measuring the time start to late keep the wrong count these kinds of things the random errors could be length of the pendulum oh I'm sorry this is off the screen Length, random errors could be length of the pendulum within 0.5 centimeters or actually 0.1 centimeters hitting the stopwatch within once reaction time usually about 0.2 seconds for the average person I also looked this one up here and got several quotes that say that's about a person's average reaction time and one thing about this one here for the specific experiment is that if you're likely to start 0.2 seconds late then you're also likely to stop at 0.2 seconds late so the reaction time actually subtracts itself out and it really is a random hour in the hundredth of a second which makes the result the measurement and the result more accurate